How are you guys doing today? Welcome Good. to the Welcome mm-hmm. to the Collider Studio with your faces surrounding you as you speak. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you so much for coming today. It's uh, it's always nice to talk to a to a fellow Vincent. I am uh, Vincent Mancuso with Collider.com, and this is Vincent D'Onofrio, director of The Kid, and with him is his amazing cast, Jake Schur and Leila George. Uh, I just want to I just want to jump right in because it, it's very interesting to me when when we get a western these days because the westerns have been around since since movies have been around and I'm wondering what what drew you to the genre and 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 how you found this story because it's, it's kind of historical but it's also a coming of age tale I'm wondering how you found the way into the story well I've, I always wanted to make a western and I wrote one a long time ago and then it just got caught up in all this kind of lawyer stuff and wasn't able to be made and so I I, I wanted to make one for a long time and it's just to, to think of an original story and a, an original way to approach a western it's difficult because the genre has been around for so long and um, and basically, it's usually about the same sort of stuff, you know, unless you're unless it's like The Searchers or something, which mm-hmm. is an amazing movie. But um, and but then you know, years passed, and I started getting into watching these coming of age type stories of young men that started to interest me. And and then one night, I, I just thought of that, that that I could add a what it would be like if I added a kid to an actual factual outlaw story. Like to stick with the facts about these kind of outlaws from the West, but add a, a fictional character into it. And uh, I thought it would be perfect for Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid because Garrett is one type of man and Billy is another. To have a boy, um, to have his er- journey be influenced by those two types of men and become a, a man by the end of the movie would be an interesting way to, to make a Western. And Jake, as the kid, uh, this is your, your first your first role, your first yeah. big screen role. And I, I think I read that you, you you first met on the Pawn Shop Chronicles, the set of the Pawn Shop Chronicles. Is that, yeah, it was is a that long true? time ago. Long time and I'm wondering ago. what the what the journey has been like from from that meeting to starring in the kid. Um, well, we met. I, I can't really remember the first time we met, but I remember. It know, was brief. Liking yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, that's and, good. Yeah. And then we met, and then Sam Major's office. Right? Yes, yeah. and that's when I decided that. I took him, we went into another room, another office. Do you remember that? Yes. And I, you gave me some sort of test. I, I gave you know. a little exercise, <laughs> a little actor exercise, yeah. yeah. What was the test? Uh, it, was, it was basically <laughs> to, get, to see <laughs> if he could <laughs> use two parts of his brain at the same time, to see if he could compartmentalize an emotion and speak um, the author's words, to do them simultaneously, and to, you know, to be able to, because that's what acting is. And you know, and I, and I never forgot it. And so when, when they kept on saying, "When are you going to start looking for an actor? When are you going to start looking for an actor to play the kid in the cast?" We finally got a casting agent. And then the first conversation that I had with her about casting was, we were looking for Billy the Kid, and then we were supposed to go on to looking for Rio. And it was the first time I had been put in that position to talk about the actors that I wanted to play Rio. And I said, you know, can we just not talk about it? Can Mm -hmm. we just not talk about Rio? I think I have Rio. But then I hadn't spoken to his father yet. So, uh, you know, that was was interesting. (laughs) How did that that conversation go? It went really well. I mean, he wanted that for him, Mm -hmm. you know. So it wasn't hard to convince him. It was just that... Um, you know, you're asking for, you, we, you come in, I didn't know Jordan very well, I just knew him a little bit, he produced another movie that I was in, but you're asking for all this money, for him to raise all this money for you to make this western about Billy the Kid and mm-hmm. Pat Garrett, and you suddenly you say, you know, I want to use a, 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 a young boy that's never done anything mm-hmm. before. And so that's a little, it's you a know. hard sell. Yeah. But uh, I couldn't, I couldn't think of anybody else. I couldn't. There's so much acting from young people go on, going on these days, but not the kind of acting I, th- I thought that would fit into our movie mm. with, with experienced actors like my daughter and like, and like um, uh, Ethan Hawke and Dane DeHaan and Chris Pratt. You know, I wanted a certain, you know, I didn't want a young actor e kid. Mm. I wanted to have a real human being in the part. And so Jake has this ability to show his... Um, human side and act at the same time. And I thought that's what was needed for the for the movie. And then you brought your daughter along for for the ride as well. And I'm wondering what that 
on the day, on set, what what that's like for 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 both of you, uh, having to having to you know place your daughter where she needs to go, having to tell her to act, and then having your father basically telling you what to do in that scene. I'm just wondering what that what that relationship is like on set. Do you put aside the the family stuff, or is it or is it more of a familiar situation? Oh, it was put aside. Every mm. it was like on set director actress relationship and at the same time it's awesome like we're making jokes every now and then when it's appropriate mm. and you know he's my dad so I'm sidled up to him a lot and on his shoulder and you know but then then we're doing these crazy intense scenes mm -hmm. you know stuff gets pretty rough for the two of us it does. and um, and my dad's in the corner of the room with the monitor mm -hmm. and it's 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 incredibly surreal um, to be in that place with all of these thoughts and memories going on and um, and there he is and it's useful as well um, it's all awesome there's nothing bad about it there's no there was no negative for mm -hmm. me everything was really cool and just and just the fact that he's my dad just well, it also helps it. that she's a good actress of course yeah because yeah, otherwise it would be really difficult <laughs> And I'm curious because you're coming off of uh, of Mortal Engines, which is this massive thing. It's this mm -hmm. massive green scene thing, and I, and I'm wondering what the, what the comparison was like for you to come into this. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, everything looked very practical. It looked like you had built sets out. Yeah, there we in shot Mexico. it in 28 days. 20. 20 days. 20 days. Jesus. Wow. Um, it was crazy. It was a complete. It was awesome because it was a completely opposite experience. I'd just done this gigantic thing. Um, with where everything is just huge, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then to do this where we're moving really fast and trying to get the day done and and um, I really liked it. You know, the I loved. I, I'm, you know, he's being very nice and saying <laughs> that I'm very good and very experienced, but I'm really a baby um, in this. I started acting late, and these are still my first jobs, and so. Um, this was a new experience for me, doing something where we got one or two takes, and when he was happy, we were we were on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. There's no opportunity to second guess. Or oh, but I did. I don't know what I just. I mean, really, and I trusted him, so that was okay. But it was it was actually nice to go from one to the other, and to you know, where everyone's tighter knit and a, and a real family. And no, it was it was really cool to do those two completely opposite things in the same year. I'm curious about that because you mentioned this is these are very early days for you as an actress, and this is your, your first movie. And I wonder if that's something you guys sort of either bonded over or, or, or helped you find a, a connection as playing siblings. But the fact that you're both, you know, not newcomers, but you're, you're very you're new. We guys. are. Yeah. Okay, yeah. There was that. And you helped me out. A lot. Well, look, there was an element of that. There's mm -hmm. also an element of the fact that I have three younger brothers and he kind of just slotted himself in um, and it was great mm. you know uh, I haven't seen him for a year yeah, that's for and a oh, wow. he's First now time. taller than me and it's weird <laughs> and um, but it's awesome to see him you know I, I think about I think about him a lot I'm always wondering what he's doing we got really close I thought we did I'm glad he we could might bring tell you, you something together. completely different but I, I mean, thought we got right. he was like you know to the point where he would get on my nerves so much that I would go to my dad like Jake's being mean to me, like I am, like, you know. But we got really close. But it also, was I was very, very happy to be able to work with such an incredible actress before oh. you know she's really known. Whatever. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. And it sounds, it just sounds like this was a very, uh, not, not small operation, but it was a very tight knit operation. You guys were sort of out there in New Mexico. You were, it was, it was, I'm, I'm curious about the production itself. Did, did you tell me? Was, was it, was it local, local workers? Did you, did you bring in the, the local craftsmen stuff like that to build the sets? Was it, was it a very you know, non-LA experience, and a non-studio experience for you? Very non-studio experience. And a lot of the workers, a lot of the crew was were, were local. You know, a lot of the camera crew um, but had worked together before, but were from, everybody was from close by, and and the set decorators and the and the set builders and all of the, the, the jobs, the, the collaborative jobs that happen around a movie were, were very local. And um, some, some, Key people were brought in from New York, and um, the, the our costume designer Ruby Catellius and, and our DP Matthew Lloyd. They were brought in from New York, and Sarah K. White, our production designer, she was brought in from New York. But these are people that I 
pick because of their work, you know, and I knew that they were, they could make small films look really good. And that's why they were all there. And but, but it was very, very small. Amazing. And, and in addition to, to directing, you play a very small role. You play, play a very small sheriff role. You yeah. appear in, in I tried to weasel out of that part. But oh, they, interesting. Why is they that? wouldn't let me. I just didn't want to, you know, I kept on saying, yeah, I, I, well, the, you know, because the producers put together the whole package with mm -hmm. my main part of the package as an actor, too. So, so I always kind of had in the back of my mind to just kind of cast somebody else. And mm -hmm. during the casting period with the locals in, in, um, in New Mexico, I, I kept on saying, well, he would also make a good Sheriff Romero. You know, it's like, <laughs> Much better the, than me. But then when it came down to it, Jordan Sher, the producer, said, no, you have to play the Sheriff. So I'm like, okay, I'll play the Sheriff. Well, it's interesting to me because I'm wondering what it's what that's like on the day when you're when you're directing and acting on the same. I, is it sort of do you have to shut off part of your brain for for a hot second to to do the role and then turn it back on? And and yeah. and when you are directing, you're sort of you know in full cowboy regalia. I'm wondering what that's like. What's it like in the moment when you are both acting and directing at the same time? It's not that it's not as difficult as you would think. Um, you're, you know, you trust the actors that are around you. You trust your cameraman. You trust the, the, everybody watching, it be shot. All your artists that are collaborative, you know, collaborative in the movie, and and so you have a lot of good people to depend on that are not um, when you're not behind the, the camera at the time. So there was never this feeling of, uh, you know, this, this is kind of different or this may not work or. No, I just kind of I, I I know how to act, so it, that's the easy part. It was nice that the part was so small, mm -hmm. and in a way, it's a little bit significant, but not much. So I just had to kind of add my little color to the film as an actor, and, and it wasn't hard to jump back and forth. And I also had my buddy Ethan there. Mm -hmm. Ethan Hawk and I are very good friends, and. and I had most of my dialogue, all my dialogue with him, so, <clears throat> you know, he would tell me. We, we constantly feel open enough with each other to, to give each other notes on our acting all the time when we're together, or even when we're not together. So it, um, that was all very free. It wasn't a problem at all, actually. Amazing. I, I would prefer to, to do the next one that I'm going to do. I would prefer not to be in it at all, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't want to be like the Hitchcock who just pops up in, in all of your movies? No, no. But but I, I would like to direct a movie where I was had a, had a big part in it. But but I don't. I, I'd like to figure out this whole directing thing first, and then maybe do that. Um, this movie also features Chris Pratt in by far probably the biggest dirtbag role he's ever had. He's, he's, I don't for think sure, he's played yeah. a villain before, and he plays a pretty despicable person in this yeah. movie. And I'm wondering, for, for everyone, that's just not the Chris Pratt that 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 you know the audience knows i'm wondering what it was like to coax that performance out of him and i'm wondering what it was like to play across from him in that role um well i mean he'd go back and forth between choking me out and screaming and then you know vincent would yell cut and he oh you all right you all right he's a very nice guy and I, I don't know how he switched that on and off and went back and forth between the nice guy that he is and playing this so believably such a horrible such a horrendous person you know doing these horrible things and um, yeah, he did a great job at it, and it was wonderful working with him. Yeah, I mean, like he said, Chris is such a lovely human being um, that he's saying these terrible things to you, screaming right here in your face. And then it's cut, and he's like, oh, my gosh, I have to hug you. <laughs> like, I, you know? And then you do, and it's... And it's it's super impressive watching him, watching Jake around that too. You know, if I, I was his age and there's this, you know, prominent figure in the room mm -hmm. doing all of this kind of stuff. You know, he held his own so much yeah. around. You know, he, he was, you forget, you forget that this is his first thing. Mm -hmm. You forget, you know. Um, because it it was really impressive, and especially just to be around those high players, um, y you forget that he's new. You know, it's it was really cool. You know, and with Chris, when it's interesting to get to to to, to meet actors, 
and to see who they are when they're not on screen, to see what kind of human being they are, you know. And it, like Chris, like all of us, have has many different sides. And so, you know, I I, I knew that my feeling was is that it was a really good idea for him to play this this bad guy. And I had a feeling that he was going to do it because of that. And it, and it just seemed to work out that way. He, he was interested in the part because of um, what a disgusting character the guy was. And so, um, you know, he came in to play and to do things. That, I have a particular way of directing that, that um, people understand when, they, when they're coming in. Dane was the only one that I didn't really know and didn't, he didn't know about me very much. Um, so I had to make sure that Dane understood that, you know, that it's all a, a collaborative effort and um, I like to put my hands in everybody's business, you know, like when they're acting and I involve myself in their performances. And, uh, and they have to be strong enough to maintain their character and come up with the goods at the same time. Um, listening and to me and taking direction um, in, in a very, very particular way. And so, um, you know, Chris was, so, is, was like that. He was so open and, and ready to go and he knew what he had to accomplish. He came in from another project, come, came in for five days, shot all of his stuff in five days and then, and then left, but brought in this amazing performance. And he did the, he got into a space in the scenes in the bar, he got into a, a really different space for him. He, he locked into this other side of himself uh, and then, you know, went for it. It's that, very interesting stuff. Yeah, no, for sure. And that collaboration that, you, that you're mentioning, the very close process that you're describing is very interesting to me because I feel like over the years as an actor, you become known for, for making very interesting choices in the moment, for playing with roles in ways that aren't expected. And I'm wondering as a director, if you ever find it hard to take a step back and, and trust the decisions or the, just the choices in the moment that another performer is making that, that you maybe would not have made in that same situation. Yeah, I mean, it's inspiring. It, it inspires me to go further, you know, to watch them do their thing. If they're doing stuff that I've never seen before, then I'm happy. If they're doing stuff that I've seen a million times, I'm, I'm not happy. That they're, you have to get an actor to expose themselves while in character, while walking and talking like this character. But they need to expose themselves to, the, to us. And as if they're turning their selves inside out. And when you get an actor to do that, you're seeing something brand new because it's that individual person doing it. You've never seen it before. And so if that's happening, I, I stay out of it. If that's not, I help them get to that point because I know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And they know I know how to do it. You know, so it's, there's a trust and a collaboration with it. It's not just them and it's not just me. It's, it's us making this story. And it's, and it's all about servicing the story and that's, that's the key, and I think that comes by, I think by he, his nature is to do that. You know, he's a reader, he reads a lot for a young man, which is awesome. His taste in films is really good. Um, he's innately, uh, now, since he's done it, he's innately made as an actor to service a story, rather than to um, be in it for the, for the popness of it. And Layla grew up like that. She grew up with actors that have been struggling to service stories her whole life. And so she naturally falls into that. And then you meet guys like Dane DeHaan, who that's, that's what he does for a living. He mm -hmm. services stories. Every, every part that he plays is, it's definitely not about him. It's about the story. And, and then Chris and, and Ethan too. So it's, you know, that's the main thing. That's the, that's, that's the thing. I think that if I, it, it, when I, when I, when I do this next film that I'm going to do, I think that it will be, that it'll be cast because of that element. I think that's the best way for me personally to go. 
Amazing. And, be and before we wrap up, this is this sounds like a very intense, very uh, close knit, very small, very you know just involved production. And I'm wondering, for each of you, what what specific moment out there, you know, in the New Mexico desert, uh, really will will stick with you long after this long after this movie comes out? What, what what moment really just springs to mind about the production that 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 will never that you'll never forget? My first day was maybe a week into them shooting already. And um, I was so nervous. And we were all sitting, everyone was in there. It was like this big dinner table scene and Ethan's to my left and Jake's in front of me, Dane's there, my dad's in another room. And um, I'm just like, you know when you can feel mm -hmm. it beating out of your chest. And we do the scene <clears throat> and we cut and my dad comes out and makes this little speech that I can't talk about because it'll just make me cry. <laughs> but it was just, you know, the first time that we'd worked together and it was really, it was really beautiful and I just will remember that forever, ever. It was, it was so awesome to work with you. It was really cool. I'm really, I feel really lucky that we were able to do this. Back at you, baby. You have to follow up. You have to follow, <laughs> yeah, follow up. Follow very much. Well. I'll try my best. <laughs> um, I would say it was towards the end of the shoot. It was around uh, 4.30 or 5 in the morning. We were shooting the scene when we're fleeing the cabin where our parents were just murdered and Chris Pratt is. We know he's going to follow us, our uncle. And uh, it was freezing, freezing out. This is a New Mexico morning. And all these people out there in you know, this field and, uh, you know, the wilderness. <laughs> and I just remember just thinking that this was something special. Was, you know, all these people out here, you know, together to create something. Um, I, I, I just remember that. It was very mem memorable to me. <laughs> Amazing. And as the director of the project, what is, what is something that, that's just going just gonna to stick with you long after this, this movie comes out? I, I, you know, to, to, to just the, the there's there are there there are key moments to every couple of days when you're shooting. There are key things that happen that you know are going to help the movie. You know, storytelling moments and things. And so each of these people, Ethan, Dane, Chris, Jake, Layla, each of them had a couple of those moments in the movie. And so those I could t I could talk to in detail. Mm -hmm. Uh, about each of those moments and how they happened and how I saw it happen. And those are the moments that I'm always going to remember because um, I watched the story unfold from, uh, their, from their humility, like as the characters. You know, they're, and, and so that's a very unique thing to see if you've written the story and, and you're directing it to watch each key character service the story in such a very specific way through this kind of private humility of their own it's, it's fantastic stuff that, that just, it's in my mind like it happened yesterday, each and every one of them. I mean, Even the most skilled actors like Ethan, you know, he's mm -hmm. like this amazingly skilled actor. There are moments where I would go up and say things to him and he would say things to me while the camera was still rolling, we would have a very brief little conversation, and then suddenly the next take would be so full of humility that it was like, wow, you know, it's like, fuck, that guy's good. You know, that, that's like, the, we're doing the right thing right now. Why, what's going to happen an hour from now? I have no <laughs> idea. But right now, we're doing really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was generally such a beautiful set to be on. Mm -hmm. It really felt like a, a family, you know. Dad and Ethan and Chris are like brothers, and um, and uh, I've known Ethan for a while, and and Jake came in and immediately just felt like family, and uh, my cousin uh, Hawk D'Onofrio, Dad's nephew, was Plays was Oren. was on set Chris's too. Chris's sidekick. And Dane had just had a baby, um, a beautiful, like yeah. literally <laughs> the most beautiful blue-eyed thing you'll mm -hmm. ever see. She is uh, gorgeous. And uh, so he, it was really nice because he would say that it was nice for, it was his first job that he'd done since his wife had given birth. He'd spent time at home. And 
he liked that this was the job he was on because it felt like a family and seeing father daughter working together yeah. and he's just mm -hmm. become a father to a daughter and so it had a lot of nice symbolism the whole thing it, it really was just beautiful I, I just felt like that was you know just a big but it was you asked about the best moments and mm -hmm. the, it was a lot of great moments you know Amazing. I think that's a gorgeous note to go on, go out on. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here again. And You're the welcome. kid in theaters, uh, go see it. <laughs>